<sighs> wow. This. <sighs> this box weighs 38 pounds and it's full of computer stuff, hopefully still intact computer stuff, that I purchased from a friend of the channel, 93 Shadow, who has sent me a package in the past. Uh, this is stuff I actually purchased from him, and in this box is a bunch of vintage computer items, and also a couple of modern computer items. So, this should be really, really fun, and I'm really excited to dig into this. Oh. But before I dig into this box, I need to give a PSA. I've mentioned this before, I think on Twitter, and I thought I mentioned it in enough places, enough times, that it was common knowledge. Um, but... If you're in the United States, never, ever, ever send me something through UPS or DHL, and I think even FedEx is an issue. Never send me a package via courier, USPS and nothing else. And the reason for that is because when you send a package from the United States into Canada via one of those couriers, the receiver in Canada gets billed for the import charges, which are something for UPS, it's something like $50 plus, uh, in New Brunswick, 15% is our tax rate, so $50 plus 15% of the declared value of the package. If you're in the U.S. and you send me something via UPS, that goes on to me. And nobody knows this unless you just know until it's too late. That's, what's ha that's what happened with this package. I got emailed a huge... Well, first of all, I thought he was sending it USPS. Um, he had issues with USPS at the last minute and sent it UPS. I didn't know this till it was too late. Um, and so with the very large declared value he put on the package, I got an email uh, telling me that I was responsible for a three digit value in import charges. I just about shat myself and he probably did too. Um, luckily he, not knowing that this was an issue, he covered the cost for me of the import charges, um, which I really, really appreciate. Um, he saved the day with that, because I, I wasn't going to be able to afford <laughs> that amount. Um, so yeah, that was something that him and I ran into. It got solved, thanks to him. I can't thank him enough for taking care of that, because I didn't know what we were going to do otherwise. Um, but yeah, a hard lesson learned. Uh, <laughs> never send anything, not that people send me packages. I don't think I've ever gotten a surprise package from everybody, anybody. But if you're in, in the U.S. and ever sending me something, you must not send UPS and... I have a feeling DHL and FedEx might be the same way. USPS only. So yeah, unfortunately, really sucks for both him and me. The whole thing went topsy-turvy with the import charges. Um, but he took care of it, and, and he's a rock star for it. I really appreciate it. It's just too bad that it happened. Anyway, with that all out of the way... The package made it here, it's huge, it's heavy, and I can't wait to dig into it. Um, so let's do that right now. Now I forgot to bring, actually my utility knife actually broke. So I'll see if fingernails are good enough and brute strength. Okay, scissors time.
93 Shadow and I have known each other for 10 years, since my really early days on YouTube. And uh, he sent me the video card I now use in my computer, the AMD Radeon R9 390X, which is an amazing card. And he sent me a bunch of other stuff too, a bunch of SSDs, the first SSDs I've ever owned, he sent me. So, uh, he's, he's given me some amazing stuff. I actually purchased this stuff, but, uh, he gave me a pretty good price for it. So I appreciate that. Shipping was a lot, but all in all, I think it turned out to be a pretty good price. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is just all kind of thrown in here. <laughs> wow, it's just all here. <laughs> There's no secrecy. It's just all in front of my eyes. Oh my goodness. I'll put this aside first. Okay. <laughs> I think... I think you can see the stuff right from here. Uh, first item, a Macintosh PowerBook G3, and it's the Pismo model, the best model. Uh, I've always wanted one of these. I, I, I've, I always thought these were really cool, the last like really cool uh, professional grade Mac laptops. This guy does not turn on. It did turn on but apparently when he gave it a final test before packaging it up it suddenly didn't turn on uh, so this is something I will have to look at I'm just gonna open it up here I'm kind of worried about the displays no wow this is really cool no I think little scratch in the display but I think that was already there there it is PowerBook G3 Pismo the last PowerBook G3 model it's got the optical drive it's got a battery awesome I really hope I can get this working uh, I assume there's a power adapter for it Hopefully. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. But yeah, there it is. So that was the first item. Non-working, but I'm hoping I can get it working. Second item. Uh, this is a modern item. A very stickered up twenty mid-2014 MacBook Air. Take a look at this. Yeah, looks okay. See if the battery holds a charge. Yeah! Oh, sweet! Display looks good. I think this guy's gonna be just fine. It's supposed to be perfect working. Should boot into the... Uh... No, I don't think it'll boot into the setup experience. He told me he put a password on it, so it'll boot into a finished... Uh... OS, but there it is, 2014 uh, MacBook Air. Now I have my mid-2012 11-inch MacBook Air. There it is, awesome. Uh, in a way, I actually traded that in part for this stuff. I actually threw it up on eBay. When we were formulating this trade, uh, and he told me there was going to be a 2014 MacBook Air in the mix, I said, well, you know what, I'll, I'll sell my 2012 MacBook Air. So that, in part, helped pay for this stuff. And the last computer in the bunch, and the one I've been most excited about, this is one of my favorite Macs of all time. Something I have always, always wanted ever since I was a child. 
two thousand five or six was when was the first time I ever saw one of these in my middle school, and I think it's the only one I ever saw in person. But here it is. An original clamshell iBook. I am so excited. This guy should work. It's missing the Apple logo in the lid. Most of these are, and they're impossible to find. But yeah, a real, a real clamshell iBook. I've always wanted one of these, and this guy should work. I'll try right now to power it on, but I'm going to assume it's the battery's no good. That's the case with most of these. Wow, this thing is so big and thick. <laughs> it's so thick. Look at that. I've always wanted one of these. Even when I was a teenager, I was looking at eBay, seeing if I could snag one, but I never did. Uh, oh, right. This one does work, but it's got some dead keyboard keys. That sometimes happens on these too, um, and replacement keyboards are very difficult to find. Uh, you, your best bet to find a keyboard is pretty much to get a whole nother iBook and transplant the keyboard. I'll hit the power button here. No, nothing. Okay. But there it is. So maybe in this video I'll plug this guy in right quick make sure he works but wow a uh, clamshell iBook and the graphite color I think it's beautiful it has turned sort of a brownish yellowish poop color like diarrhea color that just happens to these graphite ones but I still think it's a really beautiful color and that rubberized coating still feels great I see some cracking in the plastic under the rubber. I think that's normal for these guys, but it doesn't affect the function. But there it is. So I'll set that guy down. And <laughs> I actually forgot about this one. He sent this he sent this when when he discovered the PowerBook G3 suddenly stopped turning on. He said, "Well, I'll throw this in as well." To make up for it. And it is a titanium PowerBook G4. This is awesome. Of course, I already have an aluminum PowerBook G4, but I always loved how the titanium models work. And unlike the aluminum PowerBook G4, this can run Mac OS 9, which is pretty sweet. And so if this guy pans out, I might actually sell the PowerBook G4. But let me open this guy up. These guys all need a really good wipe down. It looks good. Any battery? Nope. No surprise. So we'll see if I can power this guy on later. And that's the computers. That's the computers he uh, that were in this trade. Four four Macintosh laptops. I'm I am just so tickled. I can't wait to dig into all of them. Now the other modern. Oh, there's something else in here. Oh yes. Yeah, okay. So the other modern computer item in here, it's a new motherboard for my desktop computer because my computer, of course, is 10 years old, 11 years old, actually. Um, and it's a fantastic computer, does everything I need it to and would probably continue to for years to come. But he had this and uh, decided to uh, send it along as well as, as part of the deal. And I'm really excited. I'm going to be upgrading my uh, computer with this. It's in the box. So it might actually be new. He probably told me. If it was new, he probably told me. And I just don't remember. But It's the X99 Deluxe 2. An Intel X99 based motherboard. LGA 2011. 
And I think he included an i7 of some sort, or an i5. I don't remember now. Let me, uh... Just open it up pretty quick. He put an i7-5960X in it. That's awesome. What a sweet looking motherboard. Micro ATX size. Four, five, six PCI Express slots. Uh, one's a X1 slot. This is great. It's got a little LED, LED display on it. This is going to be fantastic. One of the issues I have with my computer, just because it is so beefed up with the uh, Xeon uh, CPU, that I think, I think that CPU, I think that CPU came from him in the last package he sent me. So with that Hexacore Xeon CPU and the R9-390X, that computer belts out a ton of heat. Um, I just recently discovered that, uh, when the computer is not running all the time, my apartment cools down enough that I don't need to run the air conditioner in November. <laughs> um, and I now have it set to automatically go to sleep after two hours, so it sleeps at night and it sleeps when I'm at work. My power bill was $25 less than usual uh, this, uh, the last month. So, mm, yeah. Uses a lot of power, and of course, newer generation core CPU should be much more efficient. He, uh, I think he really wants me to overclock this thing to four gigahertz. I'm not going to. I mean, if I do, maybe as a t just for fun, but I'm not going to keep it that way. This thing's going to be so insanely powerful that there's just going to be no need. This thing's going to be so much more powerful than the first generation core based Xeon I have in there and that computer just does everything I would ever want it to do But this is going to be great um, at the very least because it'll properly support Windows 10 that uh, That Asus P60 motherboard from 2010 Windows 10 does not entirely work well with it uh, I have to have virtualization turned off or Windows 10 just won't boo I haven't even tried to see how Windows 11 uh, uh, runs on it. I have no intention of making Windows 11 a main operating system for me for quite a while to come. I, I kind of want it to gel and have Microsoft work all the bugs and stuff out of it first. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a great upgrade. Way more powerful, probably more efficient, and uh, Windows 10 should like it better. It's got RAM in it too. He gave me, oh, he gave me 16 gigs of RAM. That's perfectly fine for me. Is it DDR3 or 4? It's DDR4 RAM. That's how, that's how recent this motherboard is. So yeah, I'm glad he included the RAM because I obviously. No, he did put 32. There's more RAM slots over here. <laughs> oh, and there's RAM slots here, and then there's RAM slots here. <laughs> so I think, I think he gave me 32 gigs of RAM. Holy crap. So that's awesome. So in another video, we'll uh, install that in my computer. I don't know if it'll be soon. I, I got some prep work I need to do before I do something big like switching out the motherboard because I'm going to I'm gonna install a whole new Windows installation. I've got a RAID array that I'm going to have to break, so I'm going to have to copy all my data to a safe, separate drive and then break my RAID array and uh, have to reset up my RAID array and copy all my data off the SSD because... I have a bigger SSD that he sent me that I'm going to switch in, a 240 gig SSD. So a lot of prep work to do before I install that motherboard, but that will come in the future. And then there's another thing here, which I think is the cooler for that motherboard. 
Oh my goodness, it's heavy. Oh. Sorry, I know this is kind of out of view. Holy crap! This is not going to fit in my computer case. But he sent it to me anyway. An enormous CPU cooler. Look at this thing. It's huge. <laughs> it's not going to fit in my computer case. It's awesome though. But it ain't going to fit in my computer case. <laughs> It actually doesn't list LGA 2011, but it must fit because uh, he knows his stuff and he sent it for this motherboard. But my Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo will fit. It, I do know it's LGA 2011 compatible and came with the screws for it. Oh, got a fan that's oh, running a rubbing on the cable. There we go. Look at that, huh? That's enormous. Of course, he sent this to me because... He really wants me to overclock it to 4 gigahertz. Um, <laughs> I think my Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo could handle it, at least for a little while. But anyway, for normal use, I'm pretty sure my Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo will be fine. But wow, what an insane cooler. If I ever get a new computer case which isn't in the works, I think that case is totally fine, but if I ever got a new computer case, I'd have to get one big enough to fit this thing so I could use it. That's really cool. That's insane. And, uh, set this down somewhere. And that's pretty much it. Uh, this is a bag of power adapters. There is... One for the PowerBook G4, one for the MacBook Air, and cool retro round one for the iBook. Not one for the PowerBook uh, G3, although maybe this can you maybe the PowerBook G3 can use the same power adapter as this. I don't know, but uh. I'll have to do some research after taping this and and find out. Here's two of the vintage Mac laptops. Wow, I am so stoked to have these. Of all the uh, Macintosh laptops, the Clamshell iBook is probably my favorite, and the PowerBook G3 is probably my second favorite. So to get the own both of these is just such a treat even if even if they both have some issues that have to be sorted out well we'll see if this one can even be sorted out but i plugged in the ibooks yo-yo adapter and i think it will fit the power book too but i'm going to plug in the ibook here and uh oh light came on let's hit the power button Oh boy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah. I've got a clamshell iBook. Trackpad works. All right, that's all we're going to see of this thing. I don't want to spoil too much for when I eventually make the main video of this. Let's uh, rudely unplug it. See if this plugs into the power book. Uh, yeah, certainly looks like it fits. The hard drive spun up. Was it doing that before? Is this what it, what it was doing for him? I was just assuming it was completely dead, but the hard drive's running. Does the optical drive pop? Oh, 
I'm going to assume that's a negatory. I have heard that these will not boot up with a dead pram battery. So I don't know if he checked to see if the pram battery was good, but if he didn't, I'm hoping that may be the issue. Now I'll have to Google and see if a spinning up hard drive but no other life denotes that. I really hope it does. But for now, that's pretty much all we're going to see of this thing, I think. All right, the titanium PowerBook G4. What a beautiful machine. Definitely in the best shape. Here we go. All right. Fingers crossed for a good display. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah. All right. And trackpad works. Okay. Woohoo. So we have a good iBook that needs a keyboard. And I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I think this guy's perfect. Might have a bad battery. But other than that, I think this is perfect. It certainly makes up for the uh, dead Pismo. Speaking of the Pismo, uh, I opened it up off camera, unplugged the pram battery. You can do it in 10 seconds. Uh, and it still won't turn on beyond the hard drive spinning up so we might have a dead logic board or a dead CPU on that so it uh, might become a parts machine for another Pismo or a Lombard I think there's a lot of interchangeable parts between the two of them but uh yeah I'm, I'm super happy Ooh, 512 megs of RAM this is exciting also, it's the first time I've ever seen the classic Mac OS on a widescreen. 720p widescreen at that. Alright, we can't spoil it. This thing's definitely getting its own video. And then, of course, you've seen the very stickered up MacBook Air. So, a lot of cleanup to do. PowerBook I'll have to dig into deeper, maybe reseat the CPU, reseat the DC board, stuff like that. If I can't get it working, then I guess it'll be a parts machine. Maybe I'll find another one someday. But yeah, this is amazing. Oh wow, I yanked the plug on the PowerBook G4 and it's still asleep. It's still, it's still alive. That battery might actually be okay. Well, there's the trifecta anyhow. Graphite iBook. Dead PowerBook G3 Pismo. Mid-2014 MacBook Air. And a titanium PowerBook G4. An Asus X99 Deluxe 2 motherboard for my desktop computer. And that crazy cooler that I don't think will fit in my computer case. For the price I paid for this stuff, even with the shipping, uh, I'm very happy. I, I, think, I, I think I really got a fair deal on this stuff. I can't thank him enough, 93 Shadow. This is the second package I think he has sent me of stuff, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. But there you go. So videos of most of these items to come in the future. If anybody has a keyboard, for a clamshell iBook, I don't care if it's even a graphite one. Uh, or if you have a dead iBook with a known good keyboard, please get in touch with me. I would be interested. Likewise, if you have a uh, uh, Lombard or Pismo PowerBook G3 that maybe chimes and boots, but perhaps has a dead display or a bad keyboard or something like that, I'd be interested to hear from you as well. Other than that, that's it. Huge box of uh, goodies. 
um, geez, it's so close to Christmas, now I gotta decide if I should box this all back up and, uh, wait till Christmas to actually play with it. I don't know, I'll have to think on that. But, that's it guys, uh, thank you so much for watching, sitting through watching me, uh, unbox this stuff. And thank you for your viewership, you know, I get a little bit of money from these videos and that helps pay for stuff like this. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. And uh, I'll see you in the videos to come.